start recognizing, accepting, and prioritizing sleep mm. in your life and mm -hmm. saying, look, if you're an adult, you should not ever have less than seven hours a night. Mm -hmm. And if you do more than once a week, you have a problem and that problem is going to affect your health. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be healthier, more vitality, live longer, um, prevent and heal disease, you should really be getting eight to nine hours every single night. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, something's going to happen, but that shouldn't happen more than once a week. Mm -hmm. And you need to prioritize it. And if one night you get six hours of sleep, then make sure, you know, uh, a couple nights during the week you're getting nine to ten hours to make up for it because it really does make a difference and this really does need to pri be a priority mm -hmm. in your life. Hello and welcome to Activating Greatness. I'm Nathan Crane, an award-winning author, documentary filmmaker, and health and wellness expert. And I'm Derek Crane, a certified personal trainer, health and fitness coach, and trainer of professional athletes. Each week we broadcast new episodes with experts on life, health, fitness, business, and leadership to help you manifest the greatness that's already within you. Activating Greatness is about helping you live your life to your fullest potential and live with more meaning, purpose, health, and fulfillment. In this episode, we are starting our first part of a new health and healing series where we will be diving into a single topic, subject, or thing you can do or add into your life, diet, um, into your training, to help you heal faster, to have more vitality and wellness, prevent and heal disease, as well as if you're an athlete, to recover faster and get back into training. So, this is part number one. This is all about sleep, and we'll be bringing these new podcasts on this series to you on an ongoing basis. So, in this episode, we're talking about the detriments, what happens when you don't get enough sleep. We're sharing some scientific studies on what actually happens when you're sleeping and why it's important to get a specific amount of hours of sleep. Um, what happens when you don't get enough sleep and how that affects your, your cognitive function, your ability to uh, actually think clearly, to recover, to heal, all these different things and share with you some practical steps you can do to start sleeping better, sleep deeper, um, and so much more. So it's all about sleep, super, super important. One of the most, this is why it's number one, because it's actually one of the most important things that most people forget about or don't know enough about and their lives are not nearly at the level of vitality and wellness and energy and clarity and health and healing that they could be if they were getting enough of the right amount and right types of sleep. So make sure you stay tuned and we want to thank our sponsors for helping make this possible. Performance tea is something both Derek and I drink and love. One thing we really like about it is that it's handcrafted in small batches and made of the best medicinal herbs. We're both huge believers and consumers of herbs and love the healing benefits that herbal medicine brings to the body. Go to performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. They have incredible teas for energy, focus, recovery, and balance. Again, that's performancetea.com and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount today. So let's dive into today's episode. Sleep is such a fundamental part of our overall health and wellness. There have been so many studies done on it and they all conclude that it is one of the most important things in your life to have a fully functioning immune system, to have uh, overall health and wellness, to feel better, to think better, to work better, to perform better to have better sex drive, everything. So we're gonna get into that in a minute. What I wanna share with you first are how many hours of sleep, so there were a lot of studies done, this is one specific to the National Sleep Foundation, on how many hours of sleep you actually need mm -hmm. to perform at your best level. And so we'll go through this quickly, starting with newborns all the way up to adults. Now pay attention to these numbers closely. So newborns, their recommended amount of sleep is 14 to 17 hours they can even get up to 18 to 19 hours. That's why a newborn is basically sleeping most of the time, right? 
Uh, infants, uh, 12 to 15 hours, and they can get up to 16 to 18 hours. Toddlers, 11 to 14 hours, mm -hmm. and kind of their max range is up in the 15, 16 hour max range. Three to five year olds, uh, which my son just turned three, should be getting 10 to 13 hours of sleep. Um, really, the max level there is 14 hours. Uh, six to 13 year olds, and my daughter is just turning eight, so she's right in this range. They should be getting nine to 11 hours of sleep. There are so many young kids at that age that are going to bed late and waking up early to go to school that are not getting that nine to 11 hours as recommended. They can even get up to 12 hours and really benefit from that. So super important with six to 13 year old kids. Then we get to teenagers, 14 to 17 years old. They need at least eight to 10 hours, mm -hmm. at least, and they can get up to 11 hours as well and really benefit from that. But if your you know, teenagers aren't getting eight, nine, 10 hours of sleep every night, guess what? It's gonna be affecting them in school. It's gonna be affecting them in sports. It's gonna be affecting them, you know, their hormones. Their, we'll get into all that in a little bit, but if they're having issues, health issues, attentive issues, all kinds of things, a big part of it could be they're not getting that eight to 10 hours of sleep. And you really need to help them do that. Uh, 18 to 25 year olds, uh, which is basically an adult is seven to nine hours um, and they can get up to 10 to 11 hours as well and really benefit from that. So really that range is seven to 11 hours if you're 18 to 25. And 26 years old and all the way beyond should be a minimum of seven hours a night, bare, bare minimum up to 10 hours. Um, that's the ideal sweet spot. And so really, you wanna be on the higher end of the spectrum on these at eight, nine, 10 hours. Um, if you're getting that every night, guess what? You're gonna be benefiting from sleep in so many ways, in, in your brain, in your body, and healing, and everything. We're gonna share some studies here in a minute that, uh, that explores this for you and, and validates this for you. But if you're 26 years old or older, you should be getting at least seven to 10 hours of sleep. And if you're not, make sure to stay tuned to the end of this episode. We're gonna share with you some things you can do to help you get there. Um, before we do that, we wanna share with you some detriments that happen when you get a lack of sleep, when you're getting less than the, the ideal amount as outlined here. You're getting six hours or less a night, especially as an adult. Um, and I know we think we can manage that for long term, but guess what? There's a lot of studies that show that there are a lot of detriments to that. And Derek, why don't you share some of that? So lack of sleep right away impairs attention, alertness, concentration, and problem solving. Uh, just as you said, like kids, how important it is because all day long, they're in a classroom doing some problem solving, listening, being alert becomes vitally important in those cases. And then also uh, sleep deprivation, you're at higher risks of heart disease, heart attack, heart failure, irregular heartbeat, high blood pressure, stroke, and diabetes. Right, and so this that is- a big list. Yeah, and that's, that's a small amount of, of what's been found too. And this is especially true for adults, right? Who are, yeah. let's say, high-powered CEOs or mm -hmm. you know, you're um, working in an office or in a cubicle or working outside all day or whatever it might be. Um, all of these things apply to you as well. So true. And just even from, from my own life, I can tell a huge difference when I'm getting that seven to nine hour mark on a consistent basis compared to four to five. You know, managing a gym, also personal training, working with clients. So I've worked, I've worked with a client whose main goal was to lose weight, 250 pounds, pre-diabetic, high blood pressure medication, going through depression. Um, and a big thing, because I started speaking with them, got them on a nutritional program, started meeting with them, and two and a half months went from 250 down to 214 pounds. Um, and got off of high blood pressure medication, was no longer pre-diabetic, and it was just starting to feel better overall. So that all, also that depression started getting lighter and lighter and lighter, started noticing more joy in his life. And one thing that I asked him was like, 
what are you doing at night? Like, how much sleep are you getting mm-hmm. at night? And he said, he said, well, you know, I, I have a really, really tough time with sleeping. And I'll wake up in the middle of the night and go to the fridge. Right away, that's, that's what happened. So I, I was getting to the root. I was like, okay, well, you're going to store all that food because you're not going to burn it. It's mm-hmm. late at night. You're not getting enough sleep. So I gave him some simple exercises to be able to do, switch out some stuff, be able to create calmness, stillness. And right away, he started sleeping more. And I started seeing it within three to four days when that started happening. Right. Because he started coming in more with a smile on his face compared to this like kind of just down look, you know, kind of grudging along. He had more what I would call like buoyancy energy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. lightness. So just even noticing that with a personal client, even gave validation with my own life. I was like, okay, yeah, sleep is important. <laughs> Practice what I preach. <laughs> yeah, and so there's a, a number of studies that validate and explain exactly why that happened, mm-hmm. why high blood pressure went down, why the pre-diabetic went away, why he got off a lot of medications, why he felt mm-hmm. better, because um, all of those things are directly associated with a lack of sleep. Mm-hmm. And, and lack of sleep, again, we're talking less than seven hours. And so... Um, it's that it's that effective. It's that powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a number of studies that show that when you're only sleeping five, six hours a night long term, all these markers mm-hmm. for all these diseases start increasing. As well as when you get deeper sleep, uh, and this explains a big part of the weight issue. Mm-hmm. When you get more quality, longer, deeper sleep. Uh, your body actually releases two hormones that regulate uh, your body's ability to feel full and to feel hunger. Mm -hmm. And so when you're not getting enough sleep, those hormones aren't getting regulated properly and balanced, and you actually feel hungry. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that could certainly explain why he was waking up at night and eating, Mm -hmm. right? And then not sleeping well because you eat certain things and it gives you energy and then you feel awake and it's hard to get back to sleep. Mm -hmm. So again, sleep is associated with so many things, including depression. Yeah, huge, huge. In in a 2007 study of 10,000 people, those with insomnia were five times as likely to develop de- depression as those without. Yeah, so um, de- depression is really closely related to lack of sleep. And mm-hmm. in insomnia, obviously, people have a really hard time sleeping um, where they're diagnosed with insomnia. But it's mm-hmm. also related to people who get less than the minimum amount of sleep for long periods of time, they are significantly uh, more depressed. Mm-hmm. And that's common in studies across the board. Mm, so true. So one thing to look at right away would be, you know, if, if you're feeling depressed, dive into sleeping. Are you sleeping enough? I mean, ask yourself that right away. Studies show that over time, people who are getting six hours of sleep instead of seven or eight begin to feel that they're adapted to that, that sleep deprivation might not even know that they are sleep deprived. Yeah. So when I was, um, starting, uh, some of my first businesses and we were talking about this earlier that, um, uh, I would, I would stay up for like 24 hours Mm -hmm. straight at a time working. And this would go on for mm-hmm. months and months. Like I would, you know, work so many hours a day. I'd mm-hmm. sleep five or six hours. And I just, it was that mindset of like, I don't need that much sleep. I can mm-hmm. just work myself to success and sleep's just getting in the way. You know, mm-hmm. it's like I, would, I wouldn't sleep at all if I didn't have to. I'd just keep working, working, working. I do that for, I actually did that for years. And, and uh, when I started uh, in sales for uh, T-Mobile distributor, uh, what was that like? Tw- that was back in 2005. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I would work anywhere from 14 to 16 hour days, mm-hmm. go back, party, mm-hmm. sleep four hours, wake up and do it again. Mm-hmm. And we did that. I mean, I did that for a year and a half. I, I worked up, I got like six promotions, mm-hmm. was managing multiple locations, was hiring, firing, training, had to be a top sales person as well as a regional sales director and managing teams and recruiting and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was, I mean, I would literally work like seven days a week, mm-hmm. anywhere from 12 to 16 hours a day and mm-hmm. sleep four hours a night. Mm-hmm. And I did that for a year and a half. I thought I could do that for the rest of my <laughs> life, but 
guess what happened? Uh, all of a sudden, I started getting really sick. Mm. And like, it wouldn't go away. Like, I was sick. I was lethargic. I felt like crap. I like couldn't think clearly. It just like, it all hit me at once like a freight train. Mm. And I started, you know, and I was, I was trying to meditate here and there. At that time, I wasn't doing a lot of meditating. But I started asking kind of inside myself, like, what's going on? What's causing this? What, what do I need to do? And the first thing that came was quit. Mm. And it was like, and I was, you know, I want to be, I was, you know, uh, starting to get to the corporate level and, you know, it was being offered six figures a year and was offered a new promotion. And, and, uh, and I just, I just decided, I said, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to die if I keep doing this. I literally felt like I was going to kill myself if I kept doing it. And I was only 19 years old, you know, um, I thought I could go on like that forever. And so I literally turned down the next promotion, turned down a huge paycheck, mm -hmm. turned down this huge, what I thought was a huge opportunity um, because I knew it was going to be the same thing mm -hmm. going on and on. And yeah, there's a certain point people think, oh, I can do this forever. But no, there's a certain point where it eventually catches up with you. Mm -hmm. And that's where now it's like sleep is such an important part of my life. You know, getting that seven, eight, nine hours every night. Because it's going to make you more efficient, more effective. You're going to think better. You're going to have more clarity. You're going to have more energy. Uh, whether you're a business owner or a stay-at-home mom or an athlete, you will perform better in everything you do when you get more quality sleep. Yeah, exactly. Your health is your greatest wealth. I love, I love the fact that you were able to take a moment and just see what was really going to benefit you and what was sustainable and... I mean, very, very possibly, you could have died, keep going on that road. You know, you know what's interesting? Sleep, nutrition, I'm, I'm just remembering, that. I'm just remembering is that it wasn't too long after I quit yeah. that that company went bankrupt. Ah. So it's like, you know, it was, uh, thank, thank God, thank the universe, thank the inner intuitive guidance, you know, it got mm -hmm. me out of it um, just at the right time anyway. Oh, that's awesome. You know, but had it kept going, I was either going to die or I was going to, you know, the, be let go from the company anyway. Yeah. So um, anyway, I just thought that was interesting. A part of your higher good, no matter what. Yeah. So it's pay attention to that inner voice, right? Yeah. And getting more sleep will obviously help with that. Being more alert, having more awareness, being able to be more conscious of your surroundings. Because if you're not getting enough sleep, you can kind of get into that haze, fatigue, not really understanding you know better pathways for yourself and just being able to have clarity on it i mean there's so many benefits of sleep in and of itself in a 2013 study in mice found that waste removal systems in the brain are more active during sleep you know perhaps the researchers theorized we sleep to allow time to clear away toxic byproducts that would otherwise pile up and cause problems Right, you know, just like in that in that instance, being able to remove, and we can even think about that um, on a on like a soulful spiritual level to be able to remove toxic waste, you know, and not be able, to, you know, not clinging to to everything that might cause that fight or flight mode. I mean, something that sleep will definitely help with will be able to calm down the nervous system. Nervous system might be jacked up because you're not getting in enough sleep, rushing from one thing to another, and then when night comes along watching an intense TV show and then going through that cycle over and over again. Right. And so one of the important things about what you said with the, the brain removing toxic buildup while you sleep is that when toxins build up in the brain and it can't be removed, it actually mm. starts building up these plaque like layers, which is what happens when people have Alzheimer's. Mm. And so, you know, more sleep, help prevent Alzheimer's more sleep could even potentially reverse Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and um, you know there's a lot of things that happen we're gonna share just a few more with you uh, when you sleep that are really important to your overall body's health one is the intestines uh, and all of the organs that quiet down they slow down uh, the mm -hmm. liver goes from trying to detoxify during uh, your day and trying to build and synthesize when you're sleeping so it goes into a restorative, regenerative effect. Instead of while you're awake, you know, the liver is detoxing, it's working, it's trying to clean out. While you're sleeping, the liver is helping to regenerate. And that's actually what happens with uh, all your organs. 
Um, your blood pressure drops by five to seven points when you're getting a really good night's sleep. Um, the other thing that's super important is that HGH, different human uh, growth hormones, are actually released in the deep sleep, not the REM sleep, but the non-rapid eye movement sleep. There's three stages of that. That's when human growth hormone can be released. And that's really important, one, for building tissues, muscles, bones, all kinds of things, uh, various hormones that do that. Um, and two, let's say you're an athlete or you're you know, um, somebody that's working out, really important for building muscle and staying strong. But also as you get older, you know, uh, a lot of people complain about, oh, I don't have enough human growth hormone. So they start uh, taking prescriptions based on it, which is one of the worst things you can do. All you have to do is start sleeping eight to nine hours and guess what? And get deep quality sleep. Don't sleep in front of the TV. That's one of the worst things you can do. Um, get deep quality sleep and your body will continue to produce a human growth hormone even uh, into your older years. Um, and it also, as we talked about earlier, balances the hormones that trigger hunger, which is gonna help you with weight loss. So there's, you know, 100 other benefits. Um, I think you get the point. What we wanna share kind of in closing is some things you can do, some practical things today that will help you get more sleep and better sleep. Yeah, right away, one thing would be to be able to turn off devices, you know, at a specific time, like, 10 o'clock rolls around and it's a really good it's a really good time not to have a screen on in front of your eyes. I mean right away your your whole entire system is signaling there's light entering so I should be awake. So even even if you don't like turn off devices or stop looking at them just be be aware that if you are doing that it's going to activate your system and be like we need we need to be awake for this. Another thing that yeah. you can do is if lights are on you can you can cover them with like a shade so that they get a little bit dimmer that whole that whole entire natural process of when the sun is rising and when the sun goes down if you can start implementing that process into your day-to-day -day life your system will start adapting it's like oh we need to start getting ready for bed we need to start calming down you know things things to be able to do even just switching out like what you're watching late at night like let's say 9 15 rolls around instead of watching an intense shoot 'em up gang violence cop show news maybe turn on something that's has a little bit more comedy base can kind of calm down the nervous system something that actually may interest you documentary something that creates you know health and wellness throughout your system but also allows your whole entire system to just be like Okay, we can start calming down. <laughs> right, and what I found, the minimum for me and my family and kids is that we have to turn off all devices 30 minutes before we actually want to go to bed. Mm. Now, uh, the studies I've seen recommend at least an hour, um, and so 30 minutes to an hour. So if you want to go to bed at 10, turn off all devices, all phones, all TVs, mm. everything that stimulates your mind uh, in that regard, turn them off at 9 to 9 30 um, and when we start doing that is awesome everyone's like in bed by 9 30 because we turn everything off at 9 mm -hmm. and everyone's asleep by 9 30 10 at the latest mm -hmm. um, so that half hour to an hour is absolutely critical all devices off i mean that's like a first thing you can do don't fall asleep in front of the tv if that's your habit and the tv helps you fall asleep which it is for a lot of people um, uh, what you can do is just start turning it off and start reading. Mm -hmm. So the other thing we do is we turn off all devices at nine and then we read. So uh, our daughter reads to us and we read books and then we do that while we're laying down and slowing down the mind and getting ready for sleep. Um, and things that are like more p personal development books or mm -hmm. history books or things like that. Things that aren't necessarily gonna be like a, a crime thriller like or you know, a uh, very scary thing that gets you stimulated and scared before bed because what you put in your mind before bed has a big um, determining factor of actually how deep you sleep and how much time you spend in REM sleep and how much time you spend in non-REM sleep. So again, device is off, half hour to an hour before, read before bed. Derek, that was a great thing about turning off lights, making, you know, um, uh, another thing about lights in the room is turn off all lights. Mm. So if you have light coming in from your window, 
Uh, I've seen studies on that that it actually prevents you from getting into that really deep sleep. That mm -hmm. could be one issue. Um, even lights on your phone, lights on your mm -hmm. clock, lights mm -hmm. all, you should be able to go in your room and it should be pitch black. And if it's not, then you need to get a sleep mask or I mm -hmm. just put, um, sometimes like we don't have uh, uh, shades or dark enough shades on our bedroom window. Um, so sometimes if it's full moon, that light will come in. So what I do is I just, and actually the moonlight, the studies show that moonlight actually doesn't affect your deep sleep at all, mm. but it's the street lights and things like that. Um, and we do have street lights that, that you can see through our windows sometimes. So I put a, like a mask on at night to make mm. it totally pitch black, super helpful. Um, listening to meditative music before mm. bed, but everything should be off yeah. by the time you want to be asleep everything should be off mm. all lights pitch black no mm. music no sound and as i was saying if your habit is to have things on and that you fall asleep to just start turning them off and the first few days you might have trouble with it mm. but actually if you start reading before bed what will happen pretty quickly a week couple weeks might take up to three weeks um, you'll notice that your sleep gets better, mm -hmm. you go to bed faster, sooner, and you sleep much deeper, which again, all these things are so, so critical um, to your overall health and wellness. Another big one is caffeine. Mm -hmm. You know, no caffeine at least after 6 p.m. You know, for some people it's, it's after 12, it's after noon, you know, 12 mm -hmm. p.m. Um, for me, I try no caffeine after 5 p.m because I'm trying to be asleep by 9, 30, 10, and I find that's kind of like the window for mm -hmm. me. So figure that out for you, but don't be having caffeine an hour or two before bed and then think you're <laughs> gonna sleep deep, you know? Yeah. It's just not gonna happen. Yeah. Caffeine is a big one. Like I'm, I'm a little bit more, more sensitive. I mean, I, I love having my mate, don't get me wrong. And, but if I have like a strong cup of it, even after three in the afternoon, I notice that like 10 o'clock rolls around and I'm still kind of wired. So for me, it's it's like right at that noon mark. Noon, one, make make like another strong pot and then not have any more and I notice a big benefit from that. And another one is uh, have your final meal two to three hours before you're gonna sleep. Because if you're, if you're gonna eat right before you go to bed, eating stimulates energy. So your, your body's thinking, I just ate, so I'm gonna gear up to exercise in some form. And you just ate an energy source and your body's thinking that, okay, now I'm going to burn this off. So being able to have your digestive system even calm down in that sense. I mean, you're thinking about calming all the systems down. Right. Not eating right before bed allows your digestive system to calm down rest plus getting into that what what some people term intermittent fasting where like your last meal is at seven then you wouldn't eat again until that seven to eight mark in the morning 12 12 hours intermittent fasting really beneficial as well yeah so and the biggest thing i would say to take away from this is just start recognizing accepting and prioritizing sleep mm -hmm. in your life and mm -hmm. saying look if you're an adult, you should not ever have less than seven hours a night. Mm -hmm. And if you do more than once a week, you have a problem and that problem is gonna affect your health. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be healthier, more vitality, live longer, um, prevent and heal disease, you should really be getting eight to nine hours every single night. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, something's gonna happen, but that shouldn't happen more than once a week mm -hmm. and you need to prioritize it. And if one night you get six hours of sleep, then make sure, you know, uh, a couple nights during the week you're getting nine to 10 hours to make up for it because it really does make a difference and this really does need to pri be a priority mm -hmm. in your life. And yeah, changing sleep habits isn't gonna happen overnight. Uh, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. It uh, isn't um, necessarily immediately easy, but if you follow these steps we're giving you, if you prioritize it and you stay focused and dedicated to it, your sleep will get better. You will sleep more, you will sleep deeper have better quality sleep, and of course, overall, your health is going to be significantly better. Well, that's it for today's episode. Our hope and desire is that you get as much out of these interviews and episodes as we do. 
Each week, you can count on us being here to help you activate the greatness that's already within you. And we can all do that by continuing to develop and grow our minds, bodies, emotions, and connection to a higher purpose. Please make sure to share this with your friends on Facebook, iTunes, Twitter, and Instagram. Tag Crane Factor and use the hashtag activating greatness so we can continue growing this community together and changing the world for the better. And a huge shout out to our sponsors for making this show possible. Head over to performancetea.com to try their recovery, balance, focused, and energy teas. These teas are made from incredible healing herbal plants that help your body heal, gives you natural energy, helps prevent disease, and help you feel better in every way. Again, that's performance tea, that's T-E-A, performancetea.com, and use the code ACTIVATE15 to get a 15% discount off your order. That code works on their website, and it also works on Amazon. Again, ACTIVATE15, and you'll get a 15% discount off of these amazing teas. We appreciate you tuning in and for supporting our sponsors who make this show possible. Remember, you already have greatness within you. You just need to activate it. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you on the next episode.